Hi, my name is Eugene Stepanov. I'm a senior database solution architect with AWS. Here at AWS, I focus on SQL Server and Postgres. And this talk, it will be about running a federated query across SQL Server running on EC2 and S3. Now, this talk and the demo that will follow is the result of a research I've done for my customer. And this research involves a very specific architecture. This architecture involves separating your data, breaking apart your data based on the access pattern. Now, uh, separating data based on the access pattern makes sense from lots of different perspectives. First and foremost, it makes sense from the cost perspective because obviously keeping your older uh, cold archive in something like S3 is order of magnitude cheaper than keeping it in a relational commercial engine such as SQL Server. It also makes sense from the performance standpoint because the less data you keep in your relational engine, the more data you can fit in your buffer pools and by doing so, greatly improve the hit ratio and page life expectancy. It also makes sense from scalability standpoint because, well, scalability of S3 is essentially uh, infinite. And if you solve this problem, if you figure out your archival process properly and implement it properly, you might solve your scalability problem for good. It might also make sense from the security standpoint because if the access pattern is different, then maybe it warrants designing your access policies uh, for your cold and for your hot stores differently. Now, it makes sense from all these perspectives, and there are some more, list goes on and on, but, but that's not the focus of this discussion. But the question becomes, what if once in a while I need to execute a query spanning across my hot and my cold stores? In other words, how do I execute a federated query across these two sources? And that's the question we will try to answer in this demo. So let's take a look at the step-by-step -step instructions. Um, we will use Microsoft Polybase for it. Now, uh, Polybase is a huge topic. One hour wouldn't be enough if we just talk about Polybase features, but it's not the focus, right? The focus of this demo is to set up, configure Polybase so we can query across SQL Server and S3. Now, unfortunately, Polybase doesn't come with a built-in uh, a CSV driver for S3. So we will be leveraging a third party a driver from our friends from C data at C data. And um, so number four there, we will install their driver. Number five, we will configure our DSN for our ODBC connector. Then number six, we'll create master key, we will create credential, we will create data source, external table, and then we will be ready to execute our federated query. Now, don't try to memorize these steps. We will be coming back to them again and again. And uh, at the very high level, uh, essentially, we will have a, a SQL Server 2019 running on EC2. And then we will have a very simple uh, CSV file uh, sitting in my S3 bucket and we will configure Polybase so we can we can uh, query them. All right, with that, let's jump straight to the demo. So before we begin, let's review the environment first. I'm here on my EC2 console and I have two boxes. I have a jump box and I have a development box. Jumpbox is nothing but an EC2 instance. It's a bastion host. It's sitting in the public subnet with the public IP. Now, now, my development box, on the other hand, is in the private subnet. And that's why I have my SQL Server 2019 Enterprise with Polybase installed on it. it, it Polybase is installed already. 
I'm not going to repeat it during this demo. Uh, now, uh, obviously, it's a best practice to keep your uh, any database workload in the private subnets because exposing it to public internet, that's just a recipe for disaster. Now, let's take a look at the file now. Here's the very simple and meaningless uh, CSV file. It has three columns, uh, ID, large photo, which contains hexadecimal. Uh, and then there's the photo size in bytes. I wanted to see if I trigger any exception um, trying to push uh, large uh, records through the polybase and, and we'll see the results. We'll see those photo sizes in bytes. And then on S3 side, let me show you, let's go to now S3. I have one bucket, well, I have many buckets, but one bucket is relevant to this test. It's polybase test. And that's why I have my tab delimited file. It's called tabular underscore photos .txt. That's the file we just looked at. Now I'm leaving one part out of, out of the demo. And that is configuring the connectivity between the EC2 instance in the private subnet and the S3 bucket. Obviously, there are two ways. You can go out to the public internet and then come back in through the public endpoint, or you can deploy a gateway, an endpoint, um, in your VPC and essentially establish communication uh, all through the private infrastructure. I'll leave it up to you to figure that out. This is not part of this demo. All right, with that, let's go to now, let's go to EC2 instance. This is my EC2 instance. And again, this, this is the development box with SQL Server installed on it. This is 2019. This is the latest edition. The first thing, we want to make sure that Polybase is installed here. So this is the command you can run. And that's going to tell you whether you have Polybase installed or not. Um, I, I already installed it. I'm not going to go through that. It's not part of the demo. Please look it up. It's really easy. If, if it's a fresh installation, it's just a matter of picking the Polybase and clicking that checkbox. If you already have an instance and you need to add this component, essentially it's the same. Go through the SQL Server installer, install Polybase. That's step number one. Number two, let's see whether Polybase is enabled. Uh, for that, you need to configure uh, advanced option. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set it to one, reconfigure. And then uh, if Polybase is not enabled, you need to enable it through this command. And now we can make sure, let's execute spconfigure. Let's find Polybase. And I'm sure Polybase enabled. All right. Polybase enabled is set to one now. And this is what we want. Now let's go ahead and let's create a database. Let's use this database. And here's the first step. Let's go ahead and let's create a master key. Um, and you can type it, type it in here, any password. It is not going to be used, but that's the first step. You absolutely need the master key first. The, the second step here is uh, let's, let's create a database scope credential. And um, so that's the command you see on the screen right there. All right, now let's go back to the PowerPoint and let's see what we have accomplished. So we have just accomplished the number one. Well, we sort of skipped number one, but then we made sure that uh, Polybase is enabled now, oh, let's make sure that the Polybase service is running and there is a there is a small trick I'll show you. All 
All right, here's Polybase uh, data movement. It is running and here's Polybase engine also running. Now, if you find yourself in a situation where it cannot start, the chances are you have TCP protocol uh, disabled for your for your server. So uh, go ahead and make sure that the TCP IP, uh, it's right here, is enabled, this protocol. Otherwise, if, if, if it is disabled, then uh, Polybase would not start. That was my experience. All right, now oh, let's go back to the PowerPoint. And now it seems like we're ready to install to do number four, and that is installation of CDOTA CSV ODBC driver. Let's do that. All right, here's the page for the driver. I included this link in my PowerPoint. And um, I actually went ahead and I downloaded the trial version. They will give you 30 days for free. But uh, it's in either case, it's a, it's a very inexpensive product, inexpensive driver. So I downloaded it. It is right here on my desktop. And now I can go through the installation. Um, it, really easy. You just click um, and it will take couple of minutes and I will pause and I will come back as soon as it is uh, it's over uh, so I'm gonna install 64 bits only next and again I'll come back when it's when it's done all right our driver has been installed it only took two three minutes and now let's go ahead to our ODBC data sources. Let's go to the system DSM tab and let's create a new data source, which will be ODBC driver for CSV. And oh, let's call this driver. Let's be creative and let's call it polybase test. Now to access the S3 bucket, we're going to need AWS access key and AWS secret key. I have them here handy. Uh, for you, please go to your IAM um, for the account that you will be using to access the S3 bucket. And please go ahead and grab the, uh, the security, the access key and the secret key. Now, uh, provide the region. Uh, I am in Oregon. Here's Oregon. And now uh, let's scroll down. URI. URI is here. So what we need here, we need the URI of our S3 bucket. All right, this is our S3 bucket. Let's scroll down. And here on the miscellaneous, let's flip the CSV delimited to tab delimited because our file is tab delimited. This is it. Let's go ahead and let's test this connection. And it seems like connection uh, connection test was successful. Let's go ahead and let's create it. Now, uh, oh, one more thing. Let's go ahead, click on Polybase test. Let's go config. I'm repeating myself here, but I want to convey this point to, to be crystal clear. Um, it's the IAM user that we just supply the access key and the secret key for that will be used to access the S3 bucket. Now, if we go back to our SSMS script, um, you remember that we've created the master key and the database copy credentials. These credential, uh, credentials have nothing to do with the S3 bucket. I hope that makes sense. And now let's go to the tables tab. And now we should see our table tabular underscore photos dot txt. Click on it and you will see our three columns. So this is very important. The, the, the create external table command should match the, the names and the data types of these columns right here on this tab. 
All right, with that, uh, let's jump to our SSMS and uh, let's create our external data source. Uh, let me expand this. So here's the command. Uh, let's go ahead and let's execute that. So here on, um, for the location, I'm specifying local host. For the connection options, I'm specifying the name of my DSN, DSN that I just created. Here's the push down option. If you set it to on, then Polybase will try to push the predicate down to your external source and execute it at the external source. I set it to on and then here's my credential. Um, and now we are ready to execute our create external table. And again, as I mentioned before, the schema of this table should match the ODBC for CSV driver definition, the one we saw on the previous screen. All right, uh, let's go ahead and let's create that. Table has been created. And now let's go ahead and let's maybe execute uh, this statement. We will execute select star against photos. And now you see the data coming from the file that's, that is sitting in my S3 bucket. All right, before we wrap up, let's do one more test. Let's go ahead, let's create internal table, let's populate it, and let's do a join between internal and external table. So uh, here, very simple, one column, one column table, ID as integer. Let's populate that table with the IDs from that external table, all right? 606 records been successfully inserted. And now let's join our traditional table with external table. Here's the result. So the one ID column came from the uh, local table and the rest of the columns ID, large photo and photo size in bytes came from external CSV file sitting in S3 bucket coming through Polybase and being properly joined with the, with the local table. That brings us to the end. I hope that was beneficial. And at the end, I would like to thank every single one of you for finding time and watching this video. And at the end, happy computing from all of us at AWS. Thank you very much.